should say. Mm -hmm. I'll not mention his name to protect no, the guilty. No, don't mention his name. Yes. <laughs> okay. He went in his sister's closet in a shoebox and came out with a, some weed and rolled it up and we mm -hmm. smoked it on the way to school. I never got high after that. Something inside me said, you can't do this. You know, there's like in life, we know what we can do and what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Even though I didn't know God at the time, I knew that I would be leaving part of me behind if I continued down this road. However, when I got to college, I went to University of Michigan, where even today, weed is decriminalized. Everybody smokes weed. You can have up to, but not over an ounce, right in your pocket. Mm -hmm. In plain view. You can smoke a joint. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. I forgot where we were. Okay. <laughs> Thought we now, were in Ann Arbor. <laughs> <laughs> if you were, if, okay, so when you started smoking weed. Right. And then you started doing drugs. Cocaine then you, was next. Okay, you started yes. doing cocaine. Yes. And um, th from the cocaine that you were doing. Yes. And you went to college. Okay, oh, yes. so you're a college educated man. Uh, along yes. with the professional so, nut mother that you had. I mean, I'm <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. Lord. So anyway, yes. <laughs> Lord forgive me. Yeah. But um, so you're mm -hmm. a college educated man. Uh -huh. And then you were ordained a reverend in what year? That was in 1998. Okay. That was after my ninth or tenth felony. We, in your ninth or tenth? We might yeah, have to come I back and 11. do another show. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to lead you into some okay. of this so we can get some of right. this in there. So in 1998, you were a reverend. Right. In 1998, you were a reverend up until now. You doing drugs? Were you doing drugs? As a reverend? As a reverend. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. All right. I told the Lord, look, you called me. Mm hmm Okay. I was getting high way before you called me. I can't stop now. I've been high for 30-something years, almost what 30 years. What caused you to change? Tell me. we got five minutes. Tell me a little ah, bit about your testimony. Very what good. caused you to change uh, with this I drug was habit from high. 1998? Yes. Now. I was getting high in my den. This is uh, about a year ago. Okay. I'm getting high in my den, and the Lord appeared in front of me in my den. I had just taken a hit. I've got about $70 worth of weed and cocaine sitting on the table. I'd cooked up half of it, smoked one hit, just taken a hit and sat down. He walks into the room, appears in the room, and he says, I am sick of you. Mm -hmm. With his voice, he blew the high right out of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm not high, mm -hmm. I'm looking at my Lord, mm -hmm. and I know his voice because I've been talking to him for years, mm -hmm. okay? And he said, I am sick of you, mm -hmm. and I'm not taking any more. Mm -hmm. He said, you put another drug in that body, you will condemn your soul to hell. Mm -hmm. I'd read about hell in the Bible, mm -hmm. it's right there in Revelations, Isaiah, Jeremiah, many mentions of, the Bible, of mm -hmm. hell in the Bible. He says, you put another drug in that body, you will condemn your soul to hell. Mm -hmm. He said, you know that I cannot lie. Mm -hmm. So if you do it, I'll walk away from you. Mm -hmm. I don't care what church you go to, who you have praying for you. I don't care how many souls you bring to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do on earth to save your soul if you put another drug in that body. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the dope on the table. I look over at the Lord and I said, okay, Lord, I understand. Can we start this after I finish mm. these drugs <laughs> I just purchased? Mm. With a whoosh, he grabbed me by the elbow, mm -hmm. and he took me straight to hell. We got three minutes. Go ahead. I'm looking at this deep, dark cavern. There's no light of day. It's miles long. You can't see the end of it. Mm -hmm. It's thick with smoke. The walls are glowing with a red glow from, I imagine, the lake of fire. I couldn't see it from mm -hmm. the smoke. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was so high up on a wall. Mm -hmm. And the heat was tremendous. Mm -hmm. And he said, now there you are. And I could see myself on a wall. Now it looked like candles burning mm -hmm. throughout a cave. Mm -hmm. When I got in my body, I could see across. Those were bodies fully inflamed from toe to head, mm -hmm. fully inflamed in fire. Everyone's naked. Your clothes have burned off. There's no clothes, mm -hmm. no hair. It's all burned off, but the flesh won't be consumed by this fire, mm -hmm. okay? He said, now get in that body and see what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And I thought as I'm going to the body, which is just a millisecond, see what I'm thinking. And when I got in to that body, it was so hot. The pain was so tremendous. There isn't a word to describe it. When we get pain here on earth, mm -hmm. we go into shock. 
if it's too tremendous, and then we wake up three weeks later in a hospital and a nurse will tell us what we've been through. Mm -hmm. In hell, there is no shock system. You're going to feel every single bit of that pain. Every nerve ending is fully alive, and you're you. You can remember everybody you ever talked to on earth. You can remember every event that ever happened on earth. And then what happened? What brought you back? Because I want to make sure you get in the victory part of this testimony. Ah. So skipping from hell, I've seen it. It's mm -hmm. real. It truly exists. Mm -hmm. I thought I had doomed myself. I mm -hmm. thought it was over. Mm -hmm. And then we appeared, both Christ and I, back in my den. Mm -hmm. And he said, now, you have just seconds to make a choice. It's either me or it's the drugs. Your one-step program. That's my one-step program. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No 12-step here. Okay. One step. And he said, make your decision quick because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but I have out the eraser. Okay. And I said, I choose you, Lord. Okay. So he said, fine. I said, what would you like me to do with the drugs? He we're, said, flush We're it. wrapping it up. So yes. you flush. How long have you been sober? Clean and sober, no drugs. Just about 48, 49 weeks. I've lost count. Okay. It seems like 48, 49 years. <laughs> but that night he told me, he said, after I flushed the drugs, got rid of the paraphernalia, he told me, you go to sleep. When you wake up, you will have no withdrawals. No now, withdrawals. I thought, that's weird. 31 years of getting high, oh, you're going to crave something in the morning. We mm -hmm. always do as mm -hmm. drug addicts, you see. But he said, you will have no... Uh, no gimmies, no monkey on your back, no wants, no desires, no withdrawals, period. You will be free. So God set you free, and it's been almost a year. Almost a year. That's almost a beautiful a testimony. Thank you. That's a one-step testimony. Yes. yes. <laughs> Don't need the 12-step program. <laughs> Don't need it. On one We're wrapping step. it up. Yes. Thank you for being here Thank on you the Answer of the me. Lips. That is Thank an you. anointed testimony, Reverend Eddie. Thank you. God bless you. And God, God bless, bless you, you and keep you. Yes. And may you go forth in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. My God. See you next Saturday on the Answer.